It's time for another one-off rebuild and this one is one that a lot of you guys have been waiting for for a good few weeks now. We're going to be rebuilding Celtic. That's right, we'll be taking over as Celtic boss within Football Manager and giving ourselves five seasons to try and take this team as far as possible in European competitions. Domestic success is not enough for us. We're going to push for those European trophies. Now, if you're a Rangers fan, don't worry. There's a rebuild for Rangers only a few weeks ago, but still watch this video because then you can compare how well both teams did. I promised in that video we'd rebuild Celtic too and we are doing it here but I mean this is a team that at least on a domestic front certainly don't need rebuilding. I mean they've got plenty of first division titles, over 50 in their history combined with plenty of Scottish Cups but our real aim in this video is going to be to try and win some European silverware whether that's Conference, Europa or very unlikely the Champions League. We're going to go for it. They have won the Champions League or the equivalent back in the 1960s and were runners up in the 70s in the same competition and also in the early millennium they were runners up in the Europa League. We'll be hoping we can rely on some of our key players in this team like Callum McGregor to take us there and we've got other talented players to help us too like Kyogo Furuhashi the Japanese winger, Deizan Maeda as well up front another Japanese player in our team and winger Leo Labada who can play on the right hand side and looks like a very talented option with plenty of potential at only the age of 20. Alongside Abada, we've got other players with potential too like Alessandro Bernabe the Argentinian left back, the Danish midfielder Matt O'Reilly who looks like a phenomenal prospect in Football Manager and also Norwegian youngster Odin Thiago Holm. We've got a huge stadium, great facilities, and we are ready to start the rebuild. But first, I'm going to ask you guys to do me a few quick favors that will really help me out. These videos take a long time to do, so if we could get some support by you guys hitting the like button, it would really help because then YouTube see that you've liked it, think it's a great video, and pushes it out to more people. So thank you to anyone who can do that. And on top of that, my big aim at the minute is 25,000 subscribers before FM24. We're very close, but this big percentage of people are still not subscribed but watching the videos. So if you are watching and haven't hit that button, you would be an absolute legend if you could hit it because 25k is going to be an insane goal when we eventually reach that. So thank you so much. On top of that, comment down below what rebuild you want to see next. We always do our rebuilds based on the comments from you guys. And the final thing I'll mention is we do now have a Patreon. I mentioned it in our last video. You can find it linked in the description and we now have our first member over there. If you don't know, what I'm doing over there is sharing the save files from these rebuilds for you guys to download load from every single season of the five you'll be able to take those save files and continue the rebuild yourself see if you can do better carry on the save from there whatever you want to do a lot of you guys have requested access to these save files so that's how we're doing it you get the save files and it helps support me as a creator too so thank you to anyone who checks that out but with that being said we can take a breather. We've done all the plug-in. Let's get in to this rebuild. We've only got a few million pounds to spend and about 30,000 in the wage budget. So it's not going to be a crazy summer, but we're still going to see what we can do to try and refresh this squad ahead of our first season. And we've only got one outgoing this summer and a couple of incomings. The squad had pretty much had all of its transfer business done. But I've decided to move on this guy, Albion Ajeti, who used to be a good Wonderkid striker in FM. He was still a decent player, but I didn't really think he was going to play all that much for us. And I thought it'd be best to cash in when possible. Now, if I do sell your favorite player in this rebuild, I do apologize. I don't watch Scottish football regularly. I'm going to try and keep a decent core of this Celtic side in our team here, but there's a good chance a lot of them will be sold. After all, we are going for the Champions League and I'm not quite sure this team is ready to win that kind of competition. So we will be doing a complete revamp of the squad. Out goes a jetty, he goes to Empoli and we bring in £775,000 to reinvest in our team. I'm replacing him as our backup striker is Sidney Van Huydonk. I don't know if that's how I pronounce it, but he is a Dutch 22 year old who joins us as a good option up front, a physical presence, six foot three, nice physical ability ability strong good in the air and fairly quick whether he's going to stand out at the club straight away I don't know he's kind of one that I'm hoping will develop a little bit over time he's cost us 1.5 million from Bologna and hopefully he is going to be a star up front for us eventually and whilst we have a strong goalkeeping option in Joe Hart he isn't getting any younger so we've picked up Marian Ayoani here a Romanian 22 year old goalkeeper he's joining us from Farrell Constanta we've bought him for 1.5 million as well and loaned him straight back out to the team we've bought him 
from for one year. That way, when he comes back next season, Joe Hart will be old enough that it's probably time to start thinking about a new goalkeeper. And hopefully by then, I only here can step in and do the job. Okay, so here's a tactic that I'm going to go for to start off with at least. It's going to be a 4-3-3, but with a flat midfield as opposed to having someone deeper or someone advanced in that central midfield areas. We've got a flat three there with two wide players and a striker. And according to the game, our best 11 is this. Joe Hart in goal, Alistair Johnson at right back, who is a decent option to be honest, a Canadian. We've got Nat Phillips on loan from Liverpool, as well as Cameron Carter-Vickers, the American, who was formerly of Tottenham, I believe. Is that right? Yes, it is. He's joined us quite recently by the looks of it. Greg Taylor is our Scottish left back who's going to be bombing up that side who joined from Kilmarnock years ago. Alongside O'Reilly and McGregor, who we've mentioned before, Ryo Hatate in the midfield, who is a very good Japanese player. Yet again, a very strong Japanese core. I imagine that's came from the Ange Postacoglu era, and a lot of those players are still with us at the club. Abada, who he mentioned, Furuhashi, and Dusan Maeda. We know those players already. That's our team set up. Let's see how they get on in season one. And then after that, we can really get started with our own rebuild of this team. And it's been a decent season for us, exactly what I would have expected early on here. We end up winning the Scottish Cup, which is great to have. We lose out in the Premier Sports Cup to Rangers in the quarterfinal. The league title is ours with a very big points total of 101, way ahead of any of our competition. Rangers 13 points away from us, if my quick maths is correct there. Um, and yeah, great season on that front. We win the Scottish Cup and we win the Cinch Premiership. So that's two titles in the bag. But again, it's kind of what you'd expect from us. The real thing we're looking at here is our European play. We finished one point off qualifying for the knockouts with Sociedad getting eight points and us on seven, which was quite unfortunate, but that did knock us out into the Europa League where we went into the knockout playoff round and straight away we got knocked out by Freiburg, which is a team I feel like we could have at least stood a decent chance against. So it is unfortunate that we lost to them. Their next round would have been who? Who did Freiburg play? Genk. So we could have also potentially won that game. So it is quite upsetting that we did get knocked out in the playoff rounds. But as mentioned, it's only season one and this isn't really our team yet we're really going to start building from here where we've got 17 million to spend and 50,000 in the wage budget and we've now also got a good idea of who our best performers are with Dyson Maida getting 24 goals in 47 also apologies if I'm butchering the pronunciation of these names Japanese doesn't come naturally to me it seems uh, but Furuhashi here goal scoring definitely comes naturally to him but he's absolutely torn it up for us 33 and 33 in the league 28 years of age heading into his prime he is going to be a huge player for us Hatate also doing well three of our best four players were our Japanese contingent Lee Labada with a great season alongside McGregor O'Reilly and also Turnbull who got 13 goals from us from that midfield area well done to him but that's our team now though for the fun part where we can get really stuck in to the transfers let's see who we can bring in to our Celtic squad We'll start off with the outgoings. Leaving the club was Gustav Lagerbielke. Again, awful pronunciation, I'm sure, but this is a Swedish player who was playing for us. He's gone to Malmo for 400,000. He was a centre-back who was not even our fourth choice, wasn't great, so I thought, let's just cash in on him and move him on. And we've also sold Benji Seagrest, who was a goalkeeping option, but with Ayani coming in this summer, it doesn't really look like he's going to get much game time. He played only three times for his last year as our backup goalkeeper, and now we've moved him on to Hertha Berlin, for 350000 Now, I didn't make this sign-in, but there was a transfer already lined up for us, it looks like. Tomoki Iwata. I don't know whether he was already meant to be at the club and it was an issue with the transfer update. It's a mod pack that I'm using, so it might not necessarily be 100% correct. But either way, Iwata is now here. 26-year-old centre-back, another Japanese player. Comes in as probably our fourth or fifth choice defender. So we'll see if he does get much game time, but he's worth a million or so. So if nothing else, we'll sell him on for a profit later down the line. We then splashed a few million pounds on a defender that I'm hoping will come in and be our best straight away. Obviously, Nat Phillips has gone back to Liverpool after his loan, and this man has came in as our best centre-back already. His name is Fernando Calero, a 27-year-old Spaniard who can play out of the bat pretty well, nice attributes all around, and considered a four-star player in this team. Valued at £10 million, we got him from Espanyol for only £3.5 million after a great season for them. I've got real big hopes for this guy. Is he ever going to be world-class? No, but he could be a strong centre-back for us over the next few years, and help us dominate that back line. But I wanted to add some extra goals and I wanted a striker for us to really build around going forward. I like Maeda, I like Furuhashi, but both of them can also play on the left-hand side. And the Dutch striker we signed last summer is okay, but he's never going to be world-class, I don't think. Whereas this man, 
might not be world class, but he definitely has the potential to be a huge, huge goal scorer in the Scottish divisions. No offense to the Scottish League, but I think at full growth, this guy would absolutely walk that competition. His name is Samed Bazdar. He's a 19 year old Serbian striker. I haven't came across him before, but we've signed him from Partizan for 5.25 million. Now he scored some goals over there in the Serbian leagues at a young age. He's six foot one. He's quick. He's strong. He's good in the air. He's good technically and mentally as well with a lot of potential to get better. He can also play as a number 10 should we need one, although we don't. He is going to be our main striker and hopefully with the right development, this guy is going to be an absolute beast up front for us. I feel like he suits us perfectly. The board wanted us to sign under 23 players and Bazdar has now came in and it leaves our best 11 looking like this at the end of our first transfer window. Not a crazy one, mind you, but we've got the right players in, I feel, and this team has definitely leveled up a little bit. But we are starting to build towards having a strong team. I want to buy young players to sell on for profit. I feel like that's going to be the easiest way to close that gap between us and those other Champions League sides. So it's still Joe Hart in goal, although I imagine over the season, Iowani will get some game time. Johnston, Carter Vickers, Calero, Greg Taylor, Hatate, Riley and McGregor as the midfield with Abada, Furuhashi on the left and Bazdar up front already walking in to our best 11. Let's see how he gets on in his first season. Run the graphic. Let's see how we do in season two. You know what? I went into this with so much positivity. I thought maybe this will be the time we make it out of the group stages, get into the knockout rounds. No, it wasn't to be. We won the Premier Sports Cup, which we didn't win the other season. So that's great. We've got the three domestic trophies with us now. The Scottish Cup, we lost to Rangers in the semi-final. And the league, we did actually win. Although, not as good as last year. We actually did quite well. Rangers did much better than they did the previous year. So they kind of closed the gap on us. So it looks less impressive. But we did get 97 points. 80 goal difference compared to Rangers is 48. They lost six. We lost three. We drew a few. They drew absolutely none, which is why they got so close to was in the end. But we have came away with a title, very happy to do so. We've got two trophies in the bag now and it was a great season for some of our players but the group stages of the Champions League were very disappointing. Finishing in the fourth spot in a very tough group to be honest with Arsenal and Madrid who were always the favourites to come out of that group. Us and Feyenoord were basically the punching bags of the group for the other team. We finished on three points, our only win coming against Feyenoord at home. The only one winnable match I'd say out of the whole six that we would have played. So very unfortunate Fortunate. We did so poorly in the group, but we didn't even get put in the Europa League. It was always going to be tough on a European front straight away, but what I do love is straight away we have some great performances from Bazdar. Yes, Farahashi does amazing yet again, 42 goals in 51, but our 19 year old Serbian, he got 38 goals in all competitions across the season. It's already a fan favourite player and has been an absolute beast for us in front of goal. More than worth the 5 million we paid for him. He's now valued at over 20 million pounds, so we have a great talent there. Abada doing really well for us as well. Another fan favourite who loves big matches and is a consistent performer, developing really nicely on that right wing. And overall, another great season. Calero, our new centre-back, came in and did a good job for us. Was he the world-class centre-back that we needed? Not really, not yet. We're not going to be able to get them kind of players yet. But a seven average match rating across the course of a season for 3.5 million is not too bad going. Now though, we're going into season three, 40 million, 100 grand in the wage budget. Joe Hart, as you can see, is leaving us. We've got the cash. We're ready to spend it to take this team hopefully to another level. I'd like to at least make it out of the group stages of a European competition for once. Before we get into the season three transfers though, just a quick favor for me. If you haven't already, please smash that like button. It's the last time I'll ask, but it really does help the channel on a level that you couldn't imagine. So thank you to anyone who does that to help us in the algorithm, but let's check out our season three transfers. Okay, heading out the door first is Sidney Van Huydonk, who you might remember we signed in our first season. Never really worked out for him. And once we got Bazdar, he was getting less and less game time. We loaned him to Utrecht last year to get him some game time where he did quite well. They've decided to go for him permanently. For £500,000. Yes, we lose a million. We got five goals out of him. Not great, but you know what? Some transfers don't work out. I feel like Bazdar being such a success really does mean that this transfer doesn't mean too much for us now. Japanese midfielder Yosoki Idaguchi has left the club, 27 years of age. He has joined Osaka AC for £700,000. He just didn't play too much for us at all, so we've decided to move him on for a little bit of cash. 
Honduran midfielder Luis Palmer, who can play on the left-hand side and down the middle, clearly didn't have the quality level good enough for our squad, despite having some nice attributes. He wanted to leave. He asked for more game time somewhere else. So he's going to get it. He's gone to the Greek divisions to join Atromitios there after only five appearances in two years for us. 700k isn't a bad deal. And finally, Montenegrin 25-year-old midfielder Saeed Haksabanovic has gone to join Dynamo Moscow out in the Russian divisions. 2.5 million from him. We signed him apparently, loaned him to So, came back last year, didn't play too much for us. We've decided to move him on and get quite a bit of cash, to be honest, for the level that we're at. 2.5 million is going to go a long way. And we've actually had a massive summer in terms of incomings. I think our team has not just stepped up one level, but potentially two or three. We've got a new right back now, Aaron Wambasaka, joining us from Manchester United, 26 years of age. We got him on a free deal. He hasn't been playing much for Manu at all, but only a few years ago, he commanded a 45 million pound transfer fee. He's got 20 tackling. He can bomb up and down that wing. A lot of pace, stamina, strength. I think he could be a great player in this division. I've got a lot of hope for him and to sign him for free, I think is a great bit of business. The free signings didn't stop there though. We've got two more to look at. Daniel Maldini, the Italian, has joined us from Milan. He joins us as a backup option that allowed us to sell on some of the players that you saw earlier and bring in someone else for free. He's 22 as well, so he's got a few years left to get better. Then we can likely sell him on for a profit. But in terms of an inside forward, on that left position he should be a great backup to Furuhashi and I feel like this is a good signing for free not breaking the bank and helps us out in terms of our squad depth and we've brought in another goalkeeper, this time someone to compete with Ayoani in the net. We've got the Romanian international goalkeeper here with two appearances and now Ukraine's goalkeeper, Andrei Lunin, who joins us on a free deal from Real Madrid. His contract expired, he'd been on loan in Mexico, did well there. He came up in a scout report. If you don't know, we only sign players that come through on the scout reports in these videos. That way I can't use any prior knowledge to make the signings, but Lunin was rated highly, came in, and now we have two good goalkeepers competing for that number one. On shirt. We did spend some money this summer though. Two signings coming in for an actual fee. The first one is Zeno van Housden, a Belgian international with four appearances at only the age of 24. Comes in as our best centre back and he is young too with plenty of room to develop. Yes, he is a little bit injury prone, but hopefully he can avoid that here. An Inter Milan player who's been on loan to Standard Liège and also Las Palmas during this save. He joined them for 1.9 million. We then signed him from their club for 7 million. They make a nice profit. We get a player who is ready made for our division with years to get better yet. Is he ever going to be a world class centre back? Probably not, but he's got much more chance than anybody else has in our team. And if nothing else, he has big resale value. I think we've got ourselves a bargain of a defender here. And speaking of bargains, our midfield and wide areas have been upgraded massively with the signing of Uruguayan international Alan Rodriguez. We're getting players that are playing for their national teams now. He cost us 6 million from Argentinian side Argentinos Juniors, where he has been exceptional for three years. I think we've got a real talent in our hands. He's a consistent performer. He is considered one of the best players in the league already and I think this is really going to upgrade our team with the players that we've got bought in if we take a look at our best 11 now it is going to be miles better than what we had before in goal is apparently Lunin with Juan Basaka at the back Carter Vickers and Val Housden with Greg Taylor Alan Rodriguez Matt O'Reilly and McGregor in the midfield with Leela Labada, Furuhashi and Bazdar so we are still keeping a big part of that Celtic core at this point but we've definitely upgraded it with some players who are top level and hopefully they'll be good enough to to help us out in Europe too. So let's see how we get on in season three. Okay, so I don't actually know how far we've got in the Champions League just yet. I know where we have came in the league because I see it when I'm on my home screen here. It tells me that we've won. So we have won the title, 99 points compared to Rangers is 81. We didn't win any of the cup competitions. Runners up in the Scottish Cup to Rangers who beat us 3-0. That was an unfortunate loss and something that I imagine a lot of Celtic fans wouldn't have been happy about considering they also knocked us out in the quarterfinal of the Premier Sports Cup 2. Did we do anything in the Champions League? It is now the new format with the league phase. We finished actually in a playoff spot, 19th. So that would have put us in a playoff knockout round. 12 points there, four wins, four losses, beating Inter, Manu, Braga and Powok, losing to Club Bruges, Man City Sporting and Fenerbahce. Not too bad at all, considering we were only losing 1-0 to the likes of Man City. Then we go out into the knockout playoff rounds. We get put up against Monaco. And we lose 4-3. So it was the knockout playoff rounds this time in the UCL. I guess it's a little bit better, but um, 
feel like we could have done Monaco in there and clearly we could have done because they only beat us 4-3 on aggregate. We beat them 3-1 at our stadium with Bazdar getting two and Furuhashi getting one but then away from home they beat us 3-0. Very unfortunate but at least we finally got out of the group stage. At least this league phase makes it a lot easier for us to qualify. Um, so yeah we got into a knockout round but I am noticing so if you don't know I do holiday these seasons. We're missing a player here. Where is Leo Labada? Leo Labada is not an option. Now, he could have had a release clause in his contract. Let's find out. Yeah, we lost him. Leo Labada went to PSG. They played his release clause of 25.5 million. It looks like it was early on in the season as well. So we've played pretty much the whole season without one of our star players, which was massively, massively unfortunate. I don't think PSG will give him enough game time. I think he will regret that move, but he has left us. Thankfully, though, our new signing, Alan Rodriguez, picked up the slack, getting 14 goals and 12 assists in the league alone across all competitions. He had some crazy numbers. wan having a brilliant first year for us here at the club. He ended up with nine assists and a 7.5 average match rating. What a signing he might turn out to be. Bazdar, though, he scored 50 goals in 47 appearances, a 7.5 average match rating, and becoming an elite level striker now. He's starting to get to that level. Attributes are very good all around. He's starting to become a top level player. Four goals in seven appearances for Serbia too. More than a goal a game in the league. What a signing he is going to be. Can't believe I've never came across him before. Furuhashi bag 24 goals. Hitate getting six. Van Housden looks like he had a good first season as well. But look, let's be honest. We're three seasons in. We've got all the success that we expected, but we haven't actually gone anywhere in a European competition yet. I think last summer definitely improved our best 11. Now we need to work on bringing in some extra depth and some more quality star players to help the team. And to do that, we have got drum roll. 20 million. I didn't actually know yet until we looked on this screen, but 22 mil, about 200k in the wage budget. I could definitely do some good business there. So let's see what we can make happen in season four's transfer window. I'm very happy with the business we've done this window. Some very exciting players coming in. Let's start with the sales though. Rocco Vata, 22-year-old Scottish player with no potential, no ability, has signed for Aberdeen for 130k. Marian Ayawani, the Romanian goalkeeper, was upset that he wasn't getting much game time. He wasn't too great in the net anymore. And Lunin had clearly established himself as the first team player. I didn't want any upset players at the club. He didn't play at all last year. So he's moved to St. Etienne for about 800k. And 23-year-old South Korean midfield Fielder Yang Huyen Jun has left the club to go and join Hyundai Ulsan for £1.8 million in the K League. Basically, he just had very little ability, very little potential, and for that reason, wasn't playing for as much at all. So we've let him go. And here come the incomings. Leo Labada has been replaced by the Jamaican 27 year old Leon Bailey, who is going to be a great fit for us with that left foot on that right hand side. He joins us from Aston Villa on a free. Does that mean he's not been playing for Villa? No. I mean, he signed for £30 million, played three seasons pretty consistently, was very good for them last year in fact, but has left them on a free transfer and we are the benefiters of that because we have picked up a great player for no fee at all. Speaking of free transfers that make really good sense business wise, we have signed Julian Ponchiao here, an Angolan 24 year old with international experience joining us from SC Lorient where he has been very good in a team that isn't necessarily great in Ligue 1. Now he has got 16 passing, 18 vision, 15 technique, 16 off the ball work, stamina, agility, acceleration, he is going to be an elite level chance creator from our midfield. He's got a great eye for a pass. He's valued at 20 million, only 24 years of age. For someone that's young, has got potential, but has got great ability already, I think this is a great pickup. We continue to improve our defense by signing James Gomez, a Gambian center back with insane ability. This is our first real potentially world-class centre-back in my eyes because he's strong, he's quick, he's good in the air, he can defend well. He's not a great passer of the football, mind you. He's not terrible, but he's not necessarily exceptional at the ball-playing side of things. We've picked him up for only £7 million from the Czech division where he joined from Danish side AC Horsens originally. I think he's a top player. I think he's going to be great for us. Bought for £7 million, valued at 15 already. He has got a great future at the back in our defence. David Dactro for Farner gives us an extra option across the wing and up front and he has only came to us on loan mind you paying one million pounds or so for the full season he's played a little bit for Chelsea scored a few goals was okay at Union Berlin our scouts rated him available on loan helps us with some depth up front and I'm sure he'll chip in with a few goals across the course of the year and our big signing of the summer was a new left back to really take over Greg Taylor's position long term it's Josh Doig the player that's probably taking his minutes on an international level as well 23 year old left back joining us from Verona out in Italy where he has been 
phenomenal for three seasons. Signed for £15 million here. He was not cheap at all, but he's got great ability, great potential. He's Scottish as well, so I'm sure he's going to end up being loved by the fans, even though I think originally he was playing for Hibs. We're going to look past that. I think he's going to be a great player for us. And now we have a brand new best 11 with pretty much the entire 11 being players that we've bought in. Lunin is in goal with Wan Bissaka, Carter Vickers, Van Housden, and Josh Doig. Wan Bissaka is wanted by Porto by the looks of it, but we're not planning on selling him anytime soon. Alan Rodriguez, Matt O'Reilly, and Ponchao take up the midfield with Bailey, Furuhashi, and Bazdar making up the rest of the team with some great players on the bench too. Gomez, McGregor, Maeda, Greg Taylor, Hatate, Datro Fafana, Bernabe, Calero. We have got some great talent at the club now. And I really think this season could be the one where we do something. I'm aiming for quarterfinals this year. Let's see how we can do. And I genuinely can't believe what I'm seeing here. It says Champions League runners up. So we didn't win the Champions League, but we've got to a final somehow. I don't know how it's gone down. We'll take a look in a second. We did win the league yet again. Again, I see that on the homepage there. We got 94 points compared to Rangers' 91. So it was close yet again. I imagine us playing so many games in Europe didn't help us, but we have won that competition. On top of that, we win the Scottish Cup for the first time in a few years. So it's good to have that back under our belts, beating Hibs 3-0. We come runners up in the Premier Sports Cup. But let's check out this Champions League run. We got so close by the looks of it. A runners-up award. Losing... Okay. <laughs> We lost 6-1 in the final. Not a great performance on the final day, but we somehow made it all the way to the final of the competition. AC Milan, by the way, no slouches. They've won it on three occasions so far during this rebuild. But let's take a look at how we got there. The league phase, we finish in an average position, 18th. That's fine. We qualify for the knockout playoff rounds. We win three against Milan. Man U beating them 7-0. That's an insane result. And Basel as well. We then drew twice to Atletico Madrid and Dortmund. We then lost to Porto, Marseille and Anderlecht. That takes us in to the knockout playoff round where we played Atletico Madrid. Beat them 3-2. A great result. I would have been more than happy with just that. But then we get put against Atalanta in the round of 16. Not the hardest game in the world, to be honest, at that stage in the competition. We win that 3-2 on aggregate. That takes us into the quarters where we beat FC Bayern 2-1. An insane result there. Getting us into the semis where we face Man City 8-7 on aggregate. What the hell is going on? We won 8-7 on aggregate against Man City only to lose the final 6-1. Let's check this out. So the final, Furuhashi scored and we got dominated for the whole game. We actually beat Man City 5-0 at Celtic Park. What a day that would have been. Bazdar scoring three, Bailey getting one, Rodriguez getting another. Man City then put seven against us at the Etihad. I have no idea what would have happened here because Man City would have had to have scored five to take it to extra time, right? So Foden in the seventh, the 58th, Haaland in the 49th and the 59th minute, Rodrigo in the 55th. Okay, that takes us into extra time, at which point Bailey scores, then Haaland scores, then Oi Hyung Ju scores, who is a player that's been at the club for a long while. We've never really spoke about him, but he's been like a fifth choice striking option, but he's ended up getting a goal. That then led to Haaland getting another, and then Bazdar scoring a penalty in the 113th, which was enough to take us into a Champions League final. What a day that would have been. The Celtic fans would have absolutely loved that. Despite getting battered in the final of the Champions League, that is a phenomenal result, and there's got to be some stuff along the way. I imagine Bazdar is going to have all the interest in the world in him now. Let's have a look. Liverpool want him apparently. After 60 goals in 56 matches, you can hardly blame them. Leon Bailey doing great too. Covering all of Abada's goals, scoring 18 times for his veg. Alan Rodriguez getting 12. Dactro Fofana getting 18 goals. That would have helped us out massively. Furuhashi starting to slow down a little bit. Even him slowing down though is still 18 goals across all competitions. Overall, a great season. We're happy with that. We've got £23 million to spend. We've improved the youth recruitment and the training facilities and we're in the process of building a new stadium I believe so that's going to be a big deal a 77,000 capacity stadium it's not going to get done during this rebuild mind you but I believe it is in the process of happening they're writing up the plans for it but there you go that was our team in season four we've got one year left let's see how we can do in our final transfer window Odin Thiago Holm has left us to join Powok. He never really developed all that much. Still a good player and was helpful, but we decided to move him on for 7.25 million with all of our recent additions. He wasn't getting as much game time anymore, so he's left the club. Dejan Mieda here has gone to join Galatasaray at the age of 28. He was a good servant for us over the years, scored plenty of goals, but it's time for him to move on to Turkey for 3 million pounds. Centre-back Fernando Calero is now 30. He was great for us whilst he was in his prime, but it's kind of up now 
he has gone to Las Palmas for 1.2 million, having not played too much at all since the introduction of James Gomez last year. Yuki Kobayashi has gone to join the Japanese divisions, leaving us for £500,000. And we certainly had some fun in the transfer window, bringing in some top talents on free deals and also a very big transfer. Connor Bradley first. He joins us from Liverpool to be our backup right back with plenty of potential. The Northern Ireland international is just going to be a depth player. How about an Italian international in your midfield? That is what you can do when you get to the final of the Champions League. Players are much more interested in joining you and David Fratesi has joined us on a free 26 years of age, 25 million pounds valuation coming in from Sassuolo after three phenomenal years for them. I think this is an absolute bargain. We weren't done there though. German international Serge Gnabry has joined us as an option on the wing. What a talent. Yes, he's 31 at this point, but him and Furuhashi are going to chip in with plenty of goals, I'm sure. He'll take up Datro for Farner's minutes, who came in on loan last year, but Gnabry is here. Not really been great for Bayern over the last few years, but in the Scottish divisions, I think Gnabry is going to turn it up and he is a real statement signing for us. I've mentioned world-class centre-backs for a long time and I feel like we have one here, or at least someone that's close to that level. Andreas Christensen, formerly of Chelsea, then to Barcelona, played a few seasons for them and has now left them on a free to join us out here. Great ability, a top player and comes in as our best centre-back straight away. And our final transfer of the rebuild, we spend money bringing in Curtis Jones, a midfield option, joins us having been transfer listed by Liverpool for 12.25 million. Nice ability, nice potential. Maybe he'll get some England caps while playing for us as well. I like him as a player and I think he'll be a great talent for us and he's versatile in a couple of areas. That now leaves our final best 11 of the Celtic rebuild looking like this. This is a team that got to a Champions League final, remember last year. It's Lunin, Wambasaka, James Gomez, Christensen, Doig, Fratesi, Ponchao, Matt O'Reilly, Alan Rodriguez, Curtis Jones and Bazdar. Matt O'Reilly quietly ticking along in that midfield and has been a great player for us. No international appearances for him. He is the only surviving player of the original team that we inherited in that best 11. Still some of them on the bench, but Bazdar has been the star of a rebuild. The shining light wanted by Chelsea and Liverpool this summer. Both teams bidding £20 million. I said no. I don't think that was enough for him. He is going to score plenty this year, I imagine. So let's see how we can do with our team in our fifth and final season. Okay, this time I'm going to start on the home screen. We'll take a look at the table and then go on to competitions. That way I won't know what's happened yet, how far we got. It's likely that we probably just got to like a round of 16 again. Looks like that final run was a bit of a fluke. But yes, here we go. The league, we've smashed it. 101 points. Rangers nowhere near us. Aberdeen starting to close the gap on Rangers. But yes, we deliver five titles in five seasons. The kind of dominance you expect from a team like Celtic. Now let's take a look. Did we win the Champions League? No, but we did get to a semi-final. And I'm going to say, no matter what that semi-final was, it looks like we lost to Chelsea. However it went, to get to a final of the Champions League and a semi-final with Celtic, within five years, I think that's a great result for us. Another few years and we could definitely become a more regular contender in these kind of stages of the competition. And if we had been dropped into the Europa League, we probably could have won something like that. So the Champions League, I think to get that far on two occasions in a row shows the progress we've made and that we're doing a great job here. So I'm going to class that as a success. The Premier Sports Cup, we don't win, but we do win the Scottish Cup yet again, beating Ross County 3-0 in the final. Let's take a look at this Champions League run. We'll start off right at the beginning where we face off in the league phase against Ajax. Lose 1-0. We then play Copenhagen and win 6-0, having some great days out in the Champions League. We then play Atletico Madrid, lose 3-0, lose 1-0 to Inter, draw to Lazio 1-1 and then beat Powok 5-0. Following that, we beat Porto 5-0 and then lose 5-1 to Man City. All over the place, really. We then get put against Roma in a knockout playoff round where we use the momentum that we have from the Scottish League to win a match 3-0. Draw to them 1 1 at home to take us into the round of 16 where we play Man U, beat them 3 2, then draw 2 2 at Old Trafford, which is enough to get us through into the quarter final where we knocked out Bayern yet again. Um, incredible result there, drawing 1 1 at their stadium, then beating them 5 2 at Celtic Park. Harry Kane getting two was not enough to combat a fur hashi hat trick in season five. What a man, Bazdar and Fratesi. We then go into the semi final, drew 1 1 to Chelsea, only to lose 1 0 to them at Stamford Bridge. Unfortunate there, but you know what? Let's watch a game. Let's watch the 5-2 win against Bayern Munich with Fratesi, Bazdar and Furuhashi getting a hat-trick in the second half. We've got to watch at least one match 
and this has got to be the one that we do go and take a look at. Let's see how we did in the quarterfinal. Like I say, this will be the end of a rebuild now. I think we've done a great job here at Celtic. Here's Harry Kane making it 1-0. Here's Harry Kane scoring a second. I won't show you too much, but then we come through and score five goals having gone behind. All after half time as well. wan with the cross, gets headed away by Kim Min Jae. wan wins it again. Bazdar wins it in the air. Fratesi brings it down, takes it past the player and then curls it in to the corner of a goal to make it, what would that be? 2-1 on the night to Bayern. Then we go ahead and try and get another. It comes forward to Bazdar who gets past the defence, goes round the goalkeeper by the looks of it, chips Diogo Costa, cool as you like to make it 2-2 on the night in the 53rd minute. But we weren't done then. Only a few minutes later, Bailey gets down the right, looking good in that Celtic shirt. It gets cleared as far as O'Reilly, who wins a header to Fratesi, to Kyogo Furuhashi, who puts it in to the top corner. He has got to be considered like a club legend at this point, I would have thought. Then in the 81st minute, we're already leading at this point, but we want another goal. wan a threat on the right side, crosses it in, finds Furuhashi, who taps it in, to the back of the net. Diogo Costa not having a great day in the goal for Liverpool there. Here comes Bazdar. Not Liverpool, by Munich. I got that wrong. Um, but here's Kyogo Furuhashi yet again going past the player and he just bends it into the corner. The goalkeeper doesn't even move. 5-2 to us. We win. And let's take a look, actually. Did Furuhashi make the legends list at the club? He doesn't. He's an icon, but a legend at the club that we've actually produced here is Samed Bazdar. He's on the same level as some legends of Celtic past. We've also got 14 in junior coaching now, 16 new facilities, youth recruitment and training facilities. We're also planning an 86,000 stadium now. Um, so clearly we're going to move into something huge. 26,000 extra seats to what we currently have here at Celtic Park. A great rebuild. I've absolutely loved it. Let me know your thoughts below and who you want to see rebuilt next. Remember, if you want to check out the Patreon, you can go there and get access to these save files and continue to rebuild yourself if you want to try and win that Champions League. But thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.